Telecom's webinar follow-up analysis to Monday's webinar and previous webinars. Feel free to ask me questions at any time. We'll talk about uh, what I hit, what I miss, because there was both of that from Monday. I did give alternate scenarios in the dollar. I was looking for the potential that if it rallied back above 96, the dollar would be a sell, but was open to the possibility that this was A, B, and C. So we have very limited follow through to yesterday's decline in the dollar. And I'm really neutral right here, especially going into the NFP. Uh, but even though the dollar index did not go up to new highs, I talked about shorts in Aussie Kiwi that worked, uh, shorts in Euro Aussie that worked, although the market did exceed my levels by a bit. And also uh, Euro Pound, because the dollar did weaken, we didn't get that break. But some interesting action happening on the Euro Pound as well. I did talk about uh, the Canadian fall falling more. Talk about selling a rally if there was one. There was a minor rally in both uh, uh, Euro, uh, Aussie Kiwi, a major one in Euro Aussie to sell into, and a minor one in USD CAD. So going into the NFP, I can make the case that this is just a simple ABC, and now we're going to have a blast, or we could have a failing rally. Um, and a lot's going to be data dependent, so um, I had some ideas about the dollar. Uh, still view if we got another big dollar rally that it's going to set up a selling opportunity. But yesterday's lows are going to be significant. You'll see when I look at the euro, the euro's rally was capped by the 21-day moving average. So I could see either happening, either a continuation of the decline. I talked about if we started heading down 92, 92 and a half was a possible target. And what could drive that, the possibility that could drive that would be uh, a miss on the NFP. I think they're looking for 230,000 jobs. Uh, something I did get right that accelerated quite dramatically. I know that uh, you're FX traders, but I talked about a potential bottom in the crude oil market. It rallied 20% from the low. We had almost a $10 rally in the crude. And that also helped accelerate the pullback in USD CAD. But here's your crude market rally at a quick one, two, three. $10 rally in crude, again, somewhat negative uh, inside day, similar to the positive uh, inside day in the dollar index. I can make a case that we're going to pull back and put in higher lows. Um, but now you can see how people could be thinking about $35 oil because this was a $10 rally. And if we break back down under 45, we could get 35. So uh, potential indecisions, this may just be uh, the first wave out and some type of fib retracement that puts in a higher low and then we get a rally back towards 60. So big question mark on this too, which uh, leaves a question mark uh, for Canada, uh, thinking if the dollar makes a new high that we'll get this push down in crude and break down. But that this is a very good example of how when rubber bands are stretched, and I did point out the glaring divergence at the recent low last week, last Wednesday. We actually got our bottom in the crude oil on Friday. And it had three tremendous up days, but it was a glaring divergence at this low. The RSI was at 32 above my favorite 30, diverging for quite some time. Gold remains under a little bit of pressure, but I'm still viewing it as a way for a pullback and that there's one more high coming in gold that could take us above 1300, maybe towards 1330, 1340. Uh, line in the sand there is going to be about 1230, 1220 to give it the benefit of the doubt. Um, still looks like it could be vulnerable to that happening, especially if the dollar has another surge that we could pull back and correct this advance, which was, you know, 180 bucks. Why can't we pull back 90, take it down to 1220 or so, and then attempt one more rally back above 1330, 1340. Then I think you have the big short coming in gold that could take us back under 
1100 an ounce down towards 1050 or so sometime this year. Give me a watch with me on my analysis of the outside markets. Something else interesting happening on the interest rate front. You know, we had a lot of weak news, the GDP, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, the bond markets are not responding. There's the potential that this was a blow-off move in the bonds. Here we go. Blow-off move in the bonds. Uh, this, you would think, would be supportive. Uh, U.S. dollar yen, but actually the U.S. dollar yen is still stuck in that triangle. I still have a negative bias, uh, and the reason is this. Uh, take a look at uh, the headline. We had a huge rally in the S&Ps yesterday. We're getting some follow-through today, and compare that to the day we had in the yen. Okay? This was a two huge days in the S&Ps, but look at the yen. U.S. dollar yen. Okay, here you go. So these are the, this is a big rally we had in the end. It's very anemic, is my point. So you know, it's my view um, that all rallies should be sold. I already have a, my toe in the water. Um, don't think we'll do much better than 1829. Uh, you could have probably very tight stops above 1880, above these highs. But to me, it looks like uh, we could be destined for some type of breakdown coming under 116.48 that could take us down to 1230, eventually down towards 110. I'm favoring that because look at the bounce you had in the end, into the end of the year. But even so, this bounce was, was strong. The S&Ps actually made new highs. So the S&Ps made new highs. Okay. The yen made a lower high. Then we had the pullback. And this bounce has been pretty anemic in the end compared to especially the last few days we've had in s and So... Uh, to me, this is a little bit of a market tell that there's some weakness. If you want to wait for confirmation, you could probably wait for 1660 to be taken out. That's this low right here, 1680. But my bias is to the downside in U.S. dollar yen. Give me a lie if you're with me. And that's an, uh, the analogy with the correlation with the S&Ps. Give me a lie if you're with me. Okay, so those are the outside markets. Let's get to our pairs. And remember, I would really recommend having uh, either very light positions or no positions into the NFP on Friday. That could be a market mover. I'd rather react to the reaction than predict the reaction. So you have your levels prepared and you're ready to react into that. So last Monday I was talking about perhaps uh, the euro could pull back if the dollar made a new high. Instead, the dollar pulled back and the euro rallied to the upside. Um, decent strength here. Uh, what I wanted to point out is where it was capped. Okay, so still under the 21-day uh, moving average. Uh, if we have a disappointment and we get through 1530, uh, then I think we're talking about the potential for uh, 116 and even 120, but uh, you could, I'd rather see some type of pullback deeper and even have a higher low. So if the dollar is going to make a new high, uh, then perhaps we're going to get this break. I think we're going to need action back under 113.20 for it to accelerate, but this could very well just be A, B, C for A. Then we get a pullback for B with a higher low and get something like this from some type of Fib retracement. Let me draw the retraces on it. Okay. 
So based on this rally that we've had all those this low, yesterday's highs. Uh, the 61A level is coming in at this shelf at about 112.70. Sometimes you'll get it, something even a little deeper that could take it to 78.6 or so. The point being the form is this is still just three waves, so potentially A, B, C, and maybe this is A. Otherwise, this is a four with a washout, but for right now, I'll call it A, B, C, looking to see if we could put in a lower a higher low in Euro USD. Give me a Y if you're with me. The dollar makes a new high and Euro doesn't. That would even be a, a larger uh, market tell if the Dixie made a new high over that 86 level and the Euro wasn't able to. Right now, it still looks like it could just be this whole thing is corrective. We've rallied back to major resistance and now I want to see what happens if we could get a higher low uh, into the NFP. So again, if the dollar rallies above uh, that 86 level, we'll see where the euro goes. And if we start getting uh, strength back above this high, yesterday's highs, you could look for a continuation up towards 116.70, 117. Give me a while if you're with me on my analysis of euro USD. So Monday I talked about looking for a short in the pound and uh, this was Monday right here and we did uh, on, on this platform it's not showing a new low in the US it did so we still have two drives here okay so I was looking for a third drive so we turned here actually it, it did it did take C4980. It took out this low by one pip before the big rally. So, so far we have a couple of drives in the pound. The pound way outperforming. That's why Euro pound has been under pressure. But I'm actually taking a shot here at this, between here and the 61.8 level that we're going to get a higher low in um, EG. And if you uh, trade that, so here's the 61.8. You see we're pulling back here, but not a bad candle here. So I'm looking at the potential that EG has bottomed. And looking at pullbacks, uh, 61.8 is not that far away from here. So this is going to be interesting on the NFP2. So we just missed the 61A level. Um, it's my preference to try and buy breaks and have stops under this low. Uh, bothers me on the four hour that it was confirmed. Well, I think that there's a possibility that we end up putting in a higher low. Uh, the last trade happened in between webinars. It happened up here on the one hour. We had a classic divergence short here. So. I covered my short and now let's see what happens around the 61.8 level down around 74, 75. That's going to be a critical area for me. Uh, if I try a buy there, I'm going to be wrong under the lows. And that low was like 74.03. 74.03, 73. so uh, risking 70 for the potential that we're going to get another wave back up to the upside and that would imply the dollar correction is continuing and that perhaps now the pound might be getting closer to running out of strength since we have rallied into some major resistance here. A lot of people talking about the potential for 154. Um, to me the pattern still looks incomplete even though we made a new low by a pip. I still think that we could trade down towards 149 one more time. It's 4874, 49. If that happens and the dollar makes a, uh, a new high, uh, that would be a potential three drive to a bottom formation in pound dollar. Give me a Y if you're with me. So again, neutral into the NFP number. Uh, here's something where my conviction's really starting to be, I pointed it out with the S&Ps. 
that uh, I'm really favoring the downside breakdown in uh, US dollar yen here and taking out 1660 is going to um, possibly confirm it. Um, maybe we make another run up towards uh, the 18 level or so. I think we're going to go for major resistance and I'm classifying this as a descending triangle and the weakness of this rally in the end maybe 1830 if we got up there on a strong number might be the right fade with stops over the 11880 level 119 level anticipating a breakdown under 11660 and then taking out these lows of 1580 is going to trigger a move towards 113 fills the gap here at 112 and a half and there actually is a countdown here around the 110 level 11029 Give me why if you're with me on my bias in the yen, US dollar yen and and how it's acting despite the risk on trade that we had in stocks over the past couple days this week. And in general, this would probably portend a, a weakening dollar and a strengthening yen should this decline. Give me why if you're with me. So that means some of the crosses um, still could be vulnerable based upon what's happening in the end. I'm neutral on the crosses because I still think the dollar, even after a surge, could correct again. And uh, the end, I have a little bit more of a negative bias on it. So I'm avoiding the crosses right now avoiding crosses. So on Monday when it came to the commodity currencies, I did talk about if you had a chance to sell a rally, I thought we might rally back to uh, 127. It was a very weak rally, only back to six and a half, and we had a continuation move here. Uh, big break in, I pointed out that we had a bearish engulfing candle. That was Monday and that there should be some downside follow through. I think I talked about 123, possibly 22 and a half. Low so far has been three and a half. So I want to see what Canada can do on a rally. It, it had a lot of uh, positive momentum at the highs. And if crude sells off, maybe we get one more push up in Canada. Uh, if we should get up towards 130, again, above these highs, I think it's going to set up a, a major selling opportunity in Canada and that would most likely coincide with uh, crude oil being pressured back down towards uh, the lows or very close to it. Give me a why if you uh, remember the short recommendation in Canada on the bearish candle engulfing pattern. It was good for a day and well over 100 pips. So congratulations if you took that. And while Canada was breaking, uh, the uh, RBA surprised with a uh, interest rate cut that took the Aussie down in a fairly big way. We made new lows in the Aussie. And I didn't have a clear idea on the Aussie, but I did have a clear idea on Aussie Kiwi. And I was looking for a correction in the Aussie Kiwi. In fact, we went to targets on that. I was talking about 105. We were trading up here at the 107 level. I said, I think that we're going to correct that on this decline that uh, the Aussie would be weaker on both the downside and in the recovery of the uh, Kiwi would be stronger. And that's exactly what happened. So if you took it up there, this was good for close to 200 pips from Monday. I talked about the possibility of maybe a third drive, but sometimes twos happen. Here's one, two. Pointed out the strong divergence there. So I booked shorts on this and now looking uh, for maybe some secondary targets down around 104 and a half. Um, it's my view. I don't think that we're going to make new lows in uh, Aussie Kiwi. I think we're going to put in higher lows. So I uh, was there for this correction, a couple of good days, and now I want to see what happens on corrections. I wouldn't be surprised if we take out the 61.8 level by a bit. 
Right, let's see where it comes in. Yeah, 61.8 is going to come in right around that level I talked about, 104.50. So another 60 pips lower. I'll probably put my toe in the water for a long, considering that this might be wave one or A, and this is B looking for a higher low, and then something of equality like this. So this is about 450 points. So that could take us back to major resistance up around 109 on Aussie Kiwi. And that says that your, pref, uh, your preferred long, when you think commodity currencies are going to go up, is going to be the Kiwi. And your preferred short, when you think commodity currencies are going to go down, it's going to be the Aussie, based upon the fact that I believe that this pair has put in a fairly significant bottom, and I don't think we're going to make new lows here on Aussie Kiwi. So for those who took that recommendation, that was spot on. And now we're going to start to be alert for potential bottoming signals, looking for three drive patterns near the lows and divergences to develop near the lows and start eyeballing the 104 and a half level in the coming days. Give me a while if you're with me on the Aussie Kiwi. So that tells me that the Aussie uh, possibly could be vulnerable for a new low. You had a nice divergence here, but perhaps it makes a new low where Kiwi, uh, to me, looks stronger. Much more dramatic rally on the Kiwi than we had in the Aussie. Let's put the Aussie up. It was nice, went right to the 200, but you see we went above the 200 in the Kiwi. So I'm looking at potentially, you know, here's three, two drives here. Maybe it gets another pop before the pullback. But an area I'd be interested in the Kiwi is probably around the 7270 level, uh, 7280 uh, for a possible higher low and then the next wave. Because I, I think it would be kind of a natural for us to get back to this flat bottom. Old support turns into new resistance. And that comes in around 76. So looking to buy the pullback in the Kiwi, prefer that over uh, the Aussie Kiwi, at least for now. But if I'm looking for longs, when the 104.50 level hits, then we're going to want to be, our preferred long is going to be the Aussie and preferred short the Kiwi. But I don't think we're quite there on the Aussie Kiwi yet. But looking for eventually, if I'm right about Aussie Kiwi bottoming in here and heading up, the Aussie is going to have more relative strength than the Kiwi. So just to correct what was said five minutes ago, once we uh, determine a higher low in Aussie Kiwi, your preferred long is going to be buying breaks in Aussie. On weakness, when you think about it, currencies are going to go up and selling rallies in the uh, Kiwi. Although I do believe there's a trade there on a dip looking for 76. Jimmy, why if you're with me? On the commodity currencies, just covered the Canadian, covered the Aussie Kiwi, and covered the Aussie individually and the Kiwi individually. So I also brought up the Euro Aussie. Um, drew this line here that it exceeded. It's right here. So we took out the line. I uh, had a throw over here. I was talking about getting short around 780. So you had to gut out a 100 pip drawdown. But then you had the possibility at this low of taking out 150 pips. So on these uh, trades, just like the guppy, you have to trade smaller with wider stops. But it was a successful call. So um, I see the potential of us rallying maybe back towards 48.29. Here's drive one. Here's drive two. If we rally up here towards 48.20, Maybe a hundred pip rally here could set up. This could be A, B, C for A. We get a B wave failing rally, and then we get that breakdown to 144. 
and at 144 that could turn out to be a major buying opportunity. So there are a couple of trades setting up where you might get a failing rally here and then one more decline towards 144.40, 144, and then perhaps a major long. So this wasn't as crisp as uh, the Aussie Kiwi or the Canadian short, but I can't always be perfect and neither can you. So if you sold this line up here, at seven and a half, you have to take some uh, gas, but it ended up working out. If you miss this trade, there could be another opportunity back at the return line up around 148.20. If it breaks hard instead, uh, area of interest for me to want to start buying is going to be right around the 44, 44.20 level. And that's going to imply, again, a stronger euro and a weaker Aussie on this pair. Give me why you if you're with the Euro Aussie trade. The CAD yen kind of an interesting setup. It has a confirmed low, so you know I'm not ready to commit to uh, the long side of it. Looks like CAD yen, uh, if CAD rallies can set up a, a failing rally, but my favorite uh, favorite position would be uh, short on strength, looking for new lows. It's not a real five star trade for me, and just wrapping it up with the guppy. Uh, Guppy still, because I favor the yen shorts, uh, still could be under pressure, but there's a nice three drive, and as I said earlier, I'm neutral on the yen crosses. So uh, good luck trading uh, after the NFP or before the NFP, and we'll be watching scenarios to see if the euro could uh, put in a higher low along with the EG putting in a higher low and be eyeballing the yen for eventually uh, my bias is to sell rallies in the end looking for eventually a breakdown under this triangle line. Also uh, the Kiwi, uh, the Aussie Kiwi, we want to be alert for uh, potential buying opportunities around that uh, 104.50 level. We pulled out a couple hundred on this correction, so I'm still viewing this as a correction, and this may have been the start of something more significant. So some uh, decent calls, and uh, be open to all scenario, the dollar, a continuation of the pullback to 92.70 in the Dixie, and should it blast and have either a failing rally or marginal new high in the dollar index, I'm going to view that as a dollar selling opportunity because I do believe before we have the bigger move in the dollar to the upside, people talking 95 or higher, that uh, we will see the 92 and a half handle in the dollar index, and that's still about 300 points beneath where we are as of right now. Any questions on anything I've covered today? Again, looking at the Kiwi, thinking that we could get some type of higher low, maybe around the 7260 level, and then a retrace, and the moment of truth is going to come in right around this uh, 7560, 76 level, and that's going to be an important barrier for Kiwi to get through to declare a bottom. So right now I'm just considering this corrective action, uh, looking to buy a break, looking for 76 in Kiwi. Any markets that I've covered that you have any questions on? Or any markets I haven't covered that you'd like me to take a look at, I'd be happy to do so. Okay, well, with that, I wish everyone good hunting. Be careful. Be flat before the NFP in the U.S.
write down these areas so you're prepared to react to them instead of analyzing on the fly. And I look forward to joining you again next Monday. Good hunting, my friends.